Uh, we're going to jump in the Word this morning. It's going to be good. Somebody say, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. But before we do, let's just ask the Lord for His help in ministering this morning, in serving uh, His Word. How many of you believe there's answers that He's already made ready for you? I mean, that's what, the, every time we come, uh, we expect to hear from Him. Father, thank you so much uh, for uh, your presence here. You said if two or more are gathered, there you are with us. So we thank you you're a teacher. We thank you that you are bringing light and uh, understanding. Lord, things that we didn't even know we needed to know, we thank you that you just illuminate to us. You show us uh, a lamp onto our feet today, and you shine ahead the path to which we're going. Father, thank you for it. We thank you for peace in this house. Thank you for peace in these hearts and in these homes, and that we have ears that hear. And so even just a silencing of hearts uh, this morning so that we would hear what you're saying clearly. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. So this morning I want to talk, uh, we're in this series called God Loves You, and it's one of those things that we say a lot of times, and it can be very cliche, right? It can be that God loves you, and you could say the statement of how do we know, because the Bible tells me so, but do, do we really know what the Bible tells us on the love of God? And this is one of those things that we got to hear again and again. As a matter of fact, um, in the Message Bible, in Hebrews, it talks about, hey, if you find yourself lagging in your faith, this is just a paraphrase of the Message Bible talking about who, the, uh, if you were to think King James more along the lines of, it says, when you, um, for the joy set before him where Christ endured the cross, he said, if you find yourself flagging in your faith, in other words, you're growing tired, go over again the message of the gospel about how Jesus, what he did, and how he endured just over and all these things. He said, go over that story again. And I think that that's one of the greatest things that we could do is go over the story again. The problem with going over the story again is the story of Christ is not this big. The story of Jesus Christ, is, it's not just this big. It's not Easter Sunday. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's a matter of fact, the story of Christ is actually this whole book. The story of Christ is, uh, is about, uh, about the character of God, which starts in Genesis and how he made everything good. And then he set man in it. So that we would know and understand the character of God and that heaven in one, one day, in not very long long off that that heaven will be the place where there's no tears there's no all the things are good God established he established it at the beginning and he says I'm going to place you back in that place of good like you see the character of God but then you see him finding a man you see his patience with mankind you know, like you go, go Genesis 1 through, you know, maybe 10, you know, after the flood, all the way up to the flood and just his patience, his patience, is, and yet finding one and finding one in Abraham or Abram at the time and finding one who, who, where he could deal with man as he wanted to deal with them. You know how he wants to deal with man? By faith. That you and I would be able to appropriate what he has by faith. This is the way he dealt with Abram by faith. That he would have, there was an exchange that and that even righteousness was given to him by faith. And this is it was only possible uh, that we could make lay hold of that if Jesus came. But getting Jesus here was all about God finding a man in Abram that would would, would Believe God, and it was from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, right? All, all the way to where we see Israel today. And Jesus coming through as a son of David. It's, it's amazing. This story is amazing. It's so much greater than Jesus dying on a cross just to, and paying for us his raise from the dead. It's so much greater than that because what happens with just the story of the cross, it, 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 we, we can't wrap uh, our head around or even our heart around that which we haven't heard. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The, so uh, the Hosea 4, 6 that says that my people, they're destroyed for what they don't know or for lack of knowledge. How many of you just sometimes do when you just don't know? You just don't know. And, and so when we hear the word of God this morning, as we talk about God's love for you, God's love for you and me, we're going to just talk maybe a little more uh, uh, nuts and bolts and pieces together of what happened in Christ and what, what does God's love for you and me really mean and what, what happened in Christ if you believed on Christ. His gift to you is not just uh, heaven, but it is eternal life. 
And, and eternal life is, if you were to look up eternal life, the, uh, the Zoe, the God kind of life, is that you could have his life and his life in you here and now. See, the Bible tells us that, and Paul told the, the, the church at Philippi, he said, it is God who is at work within me to will and to do. The life of God is at work within him. Did you know the life of God is at work within you today? We, we a lot of times, we don't, we, don't, we don't know it, and so we don't appropriate it. We don't draw on what we don't know. It's like we can have an account that has so much in it. But, but we didn't know we had that account. It's like the, those, that winter jacket that you, you went Christmas shopping and, and you didn't know where you put that few hundred dollars and, and, and you, re, you put it back on and all of a sudden, I could have used that money so many different times, but it's a blessing when you find the, you know, that, those dollars or whatever. You didn't have access to it. Yes, you did the whole time. You just didn't know it was there. And so we're talking about the life of God that is at work within us today and, and drawing on the new. Right. We're going to draw on the new. This is the, the talking about the love of God. God loves you. And so we're going to learn to think new, to think new. I, 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 love, uh, I, I love that. Just, let's learn to think new. So this is our base, um, uh, our, our base scripture this morning is Ephesians chapter 3, verse uh, 18. He says, for this reason I bow my knees. And so this is, oh, this is so cool. You know, Paul doesn't pray. I wish that the people would be holier. I wish that they would just do better and know better. Anybody ever said, anybody ever said this to your kids or had this said to you? Everybody. You know than that, right? You know better than that. The problem is, we all know better than that. We know better than that. Like, you know better than to lose your temper at a ball game and yell at the refs or yell at the coaches. Like, you know better than that. But knowing better never helped anybody do better. Isn't that true? Knowing better, you know better. The problem is, my know better, what needs to happen is there needs to be a thinking better. That my desire, my thoughts would be not to, no, 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 no. But you, you, we know better. We're going to look at this here this morning and see this. But um, because as a man thinks, he will, he will be. We got to think better. We got to think a different way. And so here, Paul is telling at the church of Ephesus, Ephesians 3 8, he's praying and he's bowing his knee. Uh, he says, From whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. And I ask that out of the riches of his glory he might strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So he's praying that you would be strengthened from within. And he says, So that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, will have power together with all the saints to comprehend the length, the width, the height, and the depth of the love of Christ, and to know this love which is beyond knowledge. So he's saying, he's, His prayer is about you and I tapping that which the love of God which has been shed abroad in your heart and that from that place of his love for us there would be an expansion we'd have to be able to draw we would be able to things would we, we'd have how do I say this there would be um, different things available to just than what we used to only draw on yeah. just ourself he's saying I want you to draw on the love of Christ I want I, my prayer is that you would be be able to draw on the love of Christ the love of Christ, the, the, the love of God. And he goes on to say, he says, the love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So he's saying, all of God is in you, but you and I drawing on that is vital. The next verse says, it says this, now to him who is able to do more or immeasurably more than we ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that's within us. To him be the glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, through all generations, forever and ever. There is in you and me the love of God which is able to do more than we thought. Let me say it this way. Where, uh, where you have been, uh, you and I, mankind, has been limited in ability to do what we want to do. The love of God could take hold of you or you could take hold of the love of God and you could do what you never had access to do before or you were incapable of doing. Yes. Let's talk about even the love of God uh, for people as you go into Walmart. 
Wonder what the love of God could do, because it was the love of God that moved Jesus, or he was moved with compassion to do something. See, the love of God in you allows you and me to do, but it allows God also to work through. And so, so many times, uh, and this is, really goes back to that, that place of, in life of being a, a refreshment to others. Amen. You can't refresh somebody with something that you not, if you don't carry, yeah. carry that thing. Yeah, right. but, but how many of you know, in, in Proverbs it says that he who refreshes others himself will be refreshed. So sometimes we're just in this dry land because we have access to something that we don't know. And we're not using it. And God, the love of God, and again, I'm talking about thinking new here this morning. God's love for you and to think new, that he's given some things to you and me with the love of God. When you got born again, the Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. So here's what happened. When you and I got born again, he gave you love on the inside of you. Not love for God, but the love of God. And so many times, this is, I wish we'd pull that up here. We talked about that last week. You can go check those notes because it's, it's way, way, too, way too long of a passage here. But so many times we think we're struggling in our lives in, in what we're trying to do right because we don't have enough love for God. But that's not the case. That would put us back into that place of law where we're based upon what we do. No, it's the love of God. That the love of, of God has been shed abroad in my heart. Not love for God. So the love of God is a power that is bigger. It's, it's wider. It's taller. It's deeper. It, it, it's so much greater. And so this is what we're talking about this morning. The, and this whole basis of the message is that we would know love better. That God loves you and me better. And so love did something. It didn't just send his Jesus for, your, for a payment. It, it, or in other words, it did that, but that did a whole lot more than what I think we grab or grasp. So let's look at this this morning. Um, and th- this love that God sent in Romans 5, 8, he says that it was demonstrated while we were still sinners. So we don't, we don't live for love. We're not working for love. You, God's love has been, the love of God has been given, the love of God has been given to the world. It's, it's given. Now, the question for you and me is just, will we receive it? The reception, uh, and this is, uh, uh, you'll see in, in uh, Corinthians where he says, now, you know, as a body, uh, the body of Christ, as a believer, he says, now you go and reconcile you go and, and, in a sense, beg people to come back to, Christ, to God through Christ. Anyway, so um, Roman, here's what's going to happen today. Uh, there's going to be some. There's going to be some change of mind. Matter of fact, repentance. I was going to talk about this last week, but um, how many of you ever heard the word repent? Right. And when we think of repent, oftentimes we think tears. Um, a lot of times we think even turn around. Right. Maybe repent means to turn around and, and go a different way. Um, but that, that word repent, let's go to Romans chapter two, verse four. It talks about the goodness of God, or do you despise or think too little of the goodness of God, not knowing that it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Okay. That's the last path. It, it's the goodness or God's kindness is to, in, is intended to lead you to repentance. I just want to hit on that word repentance this morning, because right now, while we're, while we're sitting here to the, today, we can, repentance is possible the whole day because here's what repentance is it means to change the way you think so we don't need so many times what happens is is we're thinking that uh we we leave repentance for you know the, the the bad sin that we did but repentance and let me just define it in the greek it means to change mind it means to change your mind and 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 therefore change your inner man see you don't change the inside unless you change here Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, we know we believe in our heart and confess with the mouth Jesus is Lord. But if we were to continue that, it talks about how are they going to believe unless they hear. So in other words, your believing, which is of the heart, cannot take place unless you hear. And then it goes in Romans 10, 17. Now faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So unless you and I hear, right, unless you and I hear something, we can't believe something. This is what Romans 10 uh, all the way through 17 is talking about it's talking about bringing the good news of the gospel that you can't believe here what you didn't hear here or what you didn't get from reading the word you can't believe what when you without a word you can't believe without a word and this is why words are so important 
But he says this, he said, the goodness of God is to lead you to a change of mind. Or when you see the goodness of God, what happens is when, when, when you see his mercy and his kindness, you, what you're really doing is you're hearing a word and it's causing you to think different. You're hearing the gospel, you're thinking different. Wait a minute. It wasn't, I'm not, God's not good to me based on my works? Nope. Okay, that's just kind of weird. Because like, this is how we reward our kids. We give them ice cream because they were good. Isn't this true? This is, a, this is a radical way to think that you and I would get something good based on nothing that we've done. So today, as we're talking about thinking new and we're going to read, read the word, you have the opportunity to go, uh, I just don't know about that. Or you have the opportunity to repent. In other words, to change the way you think and say, you know what, Lord, I've been trusting my hand. And I haven't had trust in you for finances because I haven't given this. So, like, even when it comes to finances, like, right, let's, let's roll here. That, that, that we're like, well, I can't believe God for my finances because I haven't done this or I haven't given this way. I haven't, and so we're trying to give so that we can trust, and that's backwards. God's going to be good to you whether you're good to him or not. So, so Pastor Nate, well, does that mean you're, if, you, if you tell everybody that God's going to be good to you whether you give to him or not, well, then I'm probably just not going to get you to give. Right? This is... This is this is where, like, you and I, we would tell somebody about the, the, the grace of God and his love for you while you're yet a sinner. Then you're just, you're just going to be telling people it's okay to go sin and live like hell. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're telling the church. You know, you need to kind of control them. Uh-huh. But love doesn't control. That's right. Love gives this choice. It's your, your choice. That's right. This is a, you're gonna, we're going to look at the word fully, and you're, you're going to go, God, oh, I, I, there's some things that I've been not thinking new. You'll, you'll see that, we'll get to this later, but you'll see that all through the word, you'll see two sons, two sons, like two people, you know, two. Let's give some, right, right from the beginning, you got Cain, okay, and then right after Cain and Abel, you got, come on, Isaac and, come on, not Isaac and Jacob, Isaac and Ishmael, and then after Isaac and Ishmael, you have Jacob and Esau, right? So you, you, you look through the word and you see that there's like, this, there's like these tandems that go through the scriptures. And then you go, all, you go to the New Testament and you got like the prodigal son, right? And you got uh, the servant son, right? So you got this like one who deserves nothing and really should get, and then one who deser- is deserving of everything but yet has received and draws on nothing. And then you have this other piece of these two sons, and this is what I'm talking about today, and that these two sons that what's happened in today, you could say, Paul said, what a wretched man I am. Why do I do what I don't want to do? The I, like I, it's like the devil on the shoulder and the angel on the shoulder, like two men. Or say it like this, um, the old, if any man bees, bees in Christ. <laughs> if, any, if you talk this fast, you'd probably, you know. If any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, the old... So uh, uh, there's a man here. The old is gone. The new has come. The problem is, is when we have both sons in the house, we have both sons. We live from both sons. We live from both identities. We've been living from both identities for far too long. And so what happens is, is we don't know how to draw on the love of God. We only really know how to draw on our wages. But the problem is when we draw on our wages, we fall in from grace. When we draw on our wages, we, we, we've fallen from grace. Yeah. It actually says that in Galatians. He says, why, why are you going to get, uh, going to get uh, circumcised? Why are you going to get circumcised? I think it's Galatians 5. He says, don't go get circumcised. That, 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 if you're of faith, that profits you nothing. As a matter of fact, all that does is prove that you no longer are drawing on faith and the grace of God. He said, I wish there's people that are tell, telling you to be circumcised. This is crazy. If you read the Bible, he said, go cut your own thing off. <laughs> Paul said, I wish they'd go cut their own thing off. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. I'm like, Paul. 
you're all, and like, like, you know, sometimes Paul, Paul's extremely radical. He said, I've been beat up. Look at this. Look at these scars. Look at this. I've been left for dead. I've been shipwrecked. I've been, y'all, you don't got, and he, Paul's amazing. And yet what he draws on is the love of God. He could, he had so much to draw on. He's like, yeah, I got this one back here, and this happened here, and this happened here, and I did that, and I did that. He said, but what I'm drawing on is the love of God. Let's keep going here. So uh, today, we're going we're gonna to have uh, some, some repentance can go forth, some change of mind. It's like, you know what? Wow, I can trust the Lord not based on my works, but based on his love. Mm-hmm. See, that's what happens is right, right uh, behavior always comes from right believing. Right behavior comes from right believing. So it's important that we, uh, we, we, need, we begin to identify with self. You know, a lot of talk about identity these days. But identify with self. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Go ahead and put up 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So you could say it this way. If you've received Christ, it's a gift to every person here that you would believe on Christ and you would trust him for your, for your sins, for your salvation. Make him your Lord and Savior. With the, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. The Bible said you'd be saved. Every person here is an invitation. He says, if, if you do that, he says, what happens is he makes you righteous. So that's now who you are. You are the righteousness of God. Wow, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty radical to think. That's who you are. You are the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. Somebody needs to say that. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. Not because of what you did do or what you didn't do, but because of what you appropriated by faith. Or what you received by faith. So the gift of righteousness is available to each person here. It just has to be received by faith. See, faith is not so much of a trying to believe as it is positioned to receive. To come under what God says. You're not trying to believe. You just come under a word of God. And by faith, I, I too am a man, the centurion said, I too am a man under authority. I come under somebody else's word. And, and Jesus said, I've not seen so much great faith. This centurion understood, I'm, all I got to do is come under somebody else's word. He said, if you'll just say the word, if you'll just say the word, I'll come under that word and my servant will be made well. I'll come under that word. I'll come under that word. This is a decision even today in repentance is I'm coming under that word. That my God supplies on my needs according to his riches, not according to my job. I'm coming under that word today. Because I've been, I've been fearing this. and been, Every time the word of God is spoken, we have the ability to choose and to repent, to change our mind and to come under a word and by repentance come under faith and appropriate grace. Grace is available to you and me. It is by grace you've been saved, yet it's through faith. So grace is the reservoir, but yet faith is the conduit for you and me, for everything in our life. And what I'm saying this morning is kind of like, and I don't even know, I, I, I've never smoked it, you know, but I'm always thinking like, man, this is the kind of stuff that you say this, some of these things you say, you, you really need to put that in your, your, your theological pipe and smoke on it for a little while and just be like, hmm. Because I have been thinking, and I have been, wait a minute, it is, the grace is available, all of the good, all of the, what God, it's just by faith, just that I would come under that word and I could, hmm. because like I, I struggle to come to get something and come boldly to the throne of grace to, uh, to get what I need because of what I've done. And, and this is that passage in Hebrews where he says, this is why it's so important for us to understand how, how the Lord, he, uh, he, he understands where we're weak. And he was, came as a man to be weak and yet without sin. So he understands. It's just, it's just so good. But just when you put that and you think, wow, God. Wow. 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 
Because here's what often, again, we're talking about, I want to kind of hit on these two sons uh, or in the two identities, the old and the new. Uh, anybody ever mess up? Okay, good. All right, I'm glad. That is, we're church, you know. So, uh, so yeah, I've messed up before um, plenty of times. As a matter of fact, that even teaching this Sunday was, was kind of jacking with me because of Friday, okay? Like Friday night is anytime there's competition in sports, man, I get, I get competitive, and I'm in the stands, right? And so I'm like, I, inside, I just, I get, I'm ready to fight. I mean, legit, all right? I mean, that's just, and, uh, and so I'm, I, I'm like, I'm shaking, trembling inside, at, at some things that are like not going the way or thinking I and I'm I, and so I'm angry like literally angry on Friday night and I'm like you know what you're supposed to do but I'm like I, I mean I, I, I you know just uh, and then I'm supposed to teach this and he's like yeah yeah you need to teach this because here's what's happening is the enemy comes in and he says you know better you know better. And so then what happens is I get mad at myself, right, for what I did and because I know better. But then I get mad that I'm mad. Anybody know this, this argument? I'm mad that I'm mad. And, that I, and so I just, and the, Lord, the Lord's like, come on, come on out. And the devil's like, here, let me just light that fire and just leave him with it. And so I'm just fighting this. Anybody, anybody ever there? You just, he just lights the fire. The accuser accuses you based on, based on you, not even your identity. But based on the outside, based on an old man, yeah. and we begin to identify with that, and what happens is, is we, get, we get just wrapped up, wrapped up, wrapped up, it'll keep us longer. And then when you miss it, anybody know what I'm talking about, like missing it? When you miss it, what are you going to do? You kind of, you ate, you, you were working out for three days straight, right? And then you went to a birthday party, and somebody made that homemade chocolate cake that you only get once a year. So three days, you were, you, were, you were just crushing it, right? And then you ate a piece of chocolate cake, right? So then because you missed it on Friday at the birthday party, Saturday morning rolls around, what are you going to do? Donuts. 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 That's what we're having. <laughs> donuts. All the way donuts. And you know, gosh, you know, it is the weekend. You know, it was Friday. We're going to hit this back Monday. You know, I already missed it. I already missed it. So guess what? You know, like, uh, what are we having? Pizza. Let's have some pizza. And, and we just missed it. So let's just say it this way. I already missed it. I already lost it. So what the? So you know what that does? It just loads the gun. To shoot yourself with more. The enemy just like, and then you did this, and then you did this, and then you did this. Yes. And so even the way out, how do you get out? How do you get out of that place? You draw on the love of God. Yes. You draw on the love of God. Thank you. you draw on the love of God. Who came, he, he, here's the deal. Did he wash you or did you wash you? So what you're needing in that moment is a good washing, okay? You can't wash you. I can't wash me. You know what I need? I need to draw on the love of God because only in that place can I yield to the, the, lo the love of God for others. It's interesting how all of this, everything that the Lord has told you and me to do, it's two things, love the Lord and love others. It all comes back to this. But you and I will never be able to have that outward expression unless we first know how much of the love of God. That he would give you and I the ability to perceive how deep, how wide, how big, how great, how wonderful is that love of God. And is at work within you. And that you could draw on that power that's at work within you. So that you would be able to do beyond what you thought it was possible before. And that there would be glory demonstrated or magnifying the Lord in the earth. Through the, his people, the church. That was Ephesians 3, 18 through 21. Thank you, Lord. So, so many times what happens in, in our life, what we're wrestling against, is we think it's against ourselves. We think it's against others. We think it's flesh and blood. We think it's natural things that we've done or not done. But can I tell you, it's not a natural thing. Listen, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 12, it tells us, uh, let's go ahead and go there real quick. 
<clears throat> it says, tells us, um, it was start in, we'll start in 10 uh, this morning, Ephesians 6, 10. And it, it's interesting how our, our, our battles, they're not flesh and blood. And the reason he tells us this in verse 12 is because so many times we think it's flesh and blood. He wouldn't have to tell us it's not flesh and blood if we wouldn't think it's a natural thing. So he says, finally be strong in the Lord and, and what? His mighty power. Hold on. Just leave that right there. Did we not just read about Paul praying for the church to be strengthened with might on their inner being, like a mighty power? He said, Here's the, the mighty power you and I need to be strengthened in is the love of God. This is, the, this is faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. And love is not uh, something you and I are to work. It's something that it is to work within us. It's something that's to work within us. It's, a pow- it's the power of God. It's his, whose power? It's his mighty power that's, that's in us. Okay. So now he says, be strong in this mighty power. Next verse. Put on the full armor of God talking about the Word of God, put on that armor of God so that you can take, a, a, and you'll notice all the way through the end of Ephesians, he talks about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, like all of the things, talking about the Word of God, how the Word of God is your weapon. What he said, not what the accuser says, but what he says, that's your armor, that's your weapons, okay? So he says, be strong in, in the love of God, be strong in his mighty power, be strong in that, and, and the love of God is why you can trust the Word of God. He loves you. He loves you. He lo- if he loves you and he's given his word to you and his word is good, then guess what? You got all that you need. Next, ver- next verse. So he said, oh, no, no, back one. Sorry. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your sand against the devil's schemes. This is how the devil works he, he, with schemes. You know what the word schemes is? Deceit. This is, this is how the devil works. Deceit. You know what he gets you and I to begin to identify with? Our old self. Our old self. Instead of thinking new. If any man be in Christ, what is it? It says the old is gone. Yeah, it sure looked. Yeah, but it, if the old is gone, how come it's still all here? Because it sure looks like this. He said, if, but hold on. What does the Bible say? If any man be in Christ, the old is gone, the new has come. So if you and I, here's the crazy thing is, is, Chickens cluck. Ducks quack. Maybe we just need to be righteous. And then guess what we would be? Righteous. In other words, when we identify with who we are, the the clucking starts. When we identify with who we are, the quacking starts. In other words, we're trying to work the outside in instead of letting the inside out. The love of God made you and I new, and our identity is I, I, am, I have been crucified with Christ, yet nevertheless it's not I who live, it's Christ who lives within me. Paul quotes this. You and I are to be living from the inside out, not from the outside in. And so this starts with you and I identifying with who we are in Christ. we got to learn to think new instead of thinking old. Because Proverbs tells us this, as a man thinks, so is he. Proverbs 11, I think it's eleven twenty three. As a man thinks, so is he. This is talking about if a man says, go ahead and eat. But really he's thinking, I hope he doesn't take very much. Right? He's talking about as he thinks in his heart, that's actually how he's going to be. That's how he's actually, his, his disposition is towards you, as he thinks in his heart. So we got to, again, he, my outward actions are going to be governed by how I think. This is the Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you and I want to have the inside come out, then what do we have to do? We have to change the way we think. This is why to, when we hear the word of God, repent, we can change. All, all the whole time we're teaching, repentance can be taking place. Changing the way I think. I can, 
be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transform, metamorphosis. The same as a butterfly. The, from the worm, a, a butterfly. From the inside out. That there's something that's on the inside that come out. How do I get the inside out? I got to think new. The love of God has made you new. It doesn't say, and then he says, you, I don't have this verse for you, but he says, work out your salvation. You can write this down and Google it. Work out your salvation in fear and trembling. The, the work out, that the, the, that which has been done, you're born again. Again, you are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. When you're born again, your spirit's made new. If you'll think new, what happens right here, you begin to think new. Your soul, your mind will come all the way out to the body and you'll begin to act new. The problem is we're trying to get the body to, and we never can really make it past here because we look at our body and we keep staying over here. When if we realize and we begin to identify with the new that I have been made new, then what happens is I be, and I and I'm no longer conformed from the outside in yeah. pressure, yeah. but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. So what do we got to do? We got to think different. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm hoping you're hanging with me this morning. I know I'm giving you a lot. Um, so here we go. <laughs> Did you know, uh, well, it's, it's really, really important that, again, that we recognize that we're not, let's go to, um, mm, mm, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 6. Ephesians 2, 1 through 6. So we're talking about um, wrestling, or not wrestling, but he says, uh, you don't fight against flesh and blood, because sometimes we, we, we just, we're trying to do the outside in, right, instead of the inside out. That's what, but we got to be strengthened with the power on our inner man. God made me new. God loves me, he, and so he made me new, okay? Uh, but the reason uh, it, this is so important about our fight, let's get Ephesians chapter 2, and you were dead in your trespasses and sin. Ephesians 2, 1. I was. That's who I was. Somebody said I was. So if you're, if you're in Christ, you were. You were dead. You're not dead. You're not dead anymore. Now, no, he said, in which you used to walk. Some of us say, I used to walk. Uh, I used to walk like, what do you mean, like yesterday or this morning or last night? Or like, what are we talking about? No, I used to walk. This is, again, we're talking about learning to think new. Okay, you used to walk when you were conformed to the ways of this world and of the ruler of the power of the air. How does the, how does the enemy work? We, we just saw this. He works through his lies and his schemes, deceit. So what does he do? He brings a word. This is how he brings a word for you and I to identify with and say, look at, look at your old self. Look at what you just did. Look at here. He, he says, look at here. Look, look at here. Would you just look at that? Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> All right. Anyway, he said, conform to the, the ways of the world and to the rule of the power of the air, the spirit who is now at work in the sons of disobedience. All of us used to live, live among them at one time. We all used to live that way. One translation says it this way. We all used to live according to that. So that means we're, we're not to live according to that. If you're in Christ, you're not to live according to that. You're not to live according to the outside. You're not to live according to the way that the prince of the power of the air that would bring a word and say, would you look at this? Would you look at that? Look at the apple. Look at this. No, how are we to live according to the word of God? This is what we're... And the, because it's in that place, according to the word of God, that you and I are to rule and reign. All of us used to live among them at one time, fulfilling the cravings of our flesh, indulging its desires and thoughts. Like the rest of us, we were by nature children of wrath, the outside, flesh. Okay, But because of his great love. This is interesting that, that God's love for you, God loves you. So he didn't just say, I'm giving you a ticket to heaven. He changed you. He changed me. He changed me to desire what he desires. God loves me so much that he changed me to desire and to think, to, to desire right. I'm the, so that even when I do miss it, I can make that adjustment. But it's not I that's working, it's the love of God within me that's working. Let's keep on going here. He says, um, but because of his great love, 
uh, for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses, for it is by grace you've been saved. And so what did he do? He raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Jesus. Why? Because you know what, what we're supposed to be doing in that realm? We're supposed to be ruling and reigning, even here and now. What does that look like? Taking or using our words under his word concerning all other words. So I would take my word and, t- and let, his, let his word be my word concerning all other words. Well, I'm just a depressed, I'm just, da, da, da. no, 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 what are you? I am new. I've been made new. Again, thinking new. It's just how you think. It's just how you think. This is, uh, or do you despise the goodness of God? Romans chapter 2, verse 4, again. Or do you, dis- do you think too little of the goodness of God? This is what happened. The goodness of God. And that goodness of God is, 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 or mercy is his seed. A covenant loyalty where he kept covenant with Abraham. He cut covenant by himself. He cut, and he cut covenant and he brought, brought here Jesus and now Jesus made a covenant. Do you and I think too little of the goodness of God? That... that uh, excuse me, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Do we think too little? Or do you show contempt? Do you think too little for the riches, the, that, uh, the extravagance of his kindness? Yeah. Forbearance, patience. Here, this is a little more wordy than, than, than the King James. But it's showing here his, part of his mercy was being patient with me. That he w- w- saw ahead, forbear, for being patient in advance. Like he knew what I was going to miss it. And, and not realizing that it is his kindness that has intended you and me to change the way that we think. We're to think different. We're to think new. As a believer, you and I are to think new. And from thinking new, we have access to different things. When we think from the love of God. Okay. So... <clears throat> Again, Romans chapter 5, 17. For if by the trespasses of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace, this is something that's circled, these are two towers, two things that we need to, to rest on. It's the bridge, so to speak. Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. It says, how much more will those who receive, how do you get the grace and how do you get righteousness? Let's, let's, let's read it again. If by the trespasses of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive, circle, underline, God's abundant provision of grace, or receive grace and receive the gift of righteousness, rule in life? You're under the old because you aren't identifying with the new where you and I are to reign in Christ because we receive not by works, But by gift, his grace, grace is not given to you because of what you did or what I've done. It's given because of his love. And the gift of righteousness. My righteousness is not because I did right. Oh, we're going to go through a few more scriptures here this morning that are just going to rock your world. You're like, that was in the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Very clearly. Reigning in life and ruling over this body, ruling over the circumstances that you face, and and appropriating grace takes you and I receiving. Because he you know what's you know what's hindered? Faith so often is hindered, our faith is hindered because of what we did do or what we didn't do. Righteousness. Our righteousness. We can't come boldly. We don't have bold faith because of, well, we just know too well who we are or who we, what we've done or what we haven't done. But to appropriate and or to reign in life, I'm going to have to receive both grace and righteousness, not one or the other. Okay? And then I'll reign through Jesus Christ. So let's look here. Um, again, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 17. So from now on, We regard no one according to the flesh, not even yourself. 
we, we had a, a bucket of uh, nuts up here, last, yes, or not yesterday, but last Sunday, or a, a jar of nuts. But, and I said, hey, what is this? And, you know, kind of shook it, and you're like, oh, nuts. And I'm like, no, it's not. And it's, y'all are looking at the outside. So then I dumped it out, and, uh, or I had Jack come up here, and they say, what's in here? And he said, a uh, bunch of nuts and bolts. And I said, no, it's not. He's like, oh, yeah? What, what is it then? <laughs> I said, well, it's not nuts and bolts. You're looking at it from the outside because that's what man does. Man looks at the outside. God looks at the heart. We, and I said, it's scrap. You know what he came for? A bunch of scrap. It, we, we look at the outside. And he said, so no longer are we supposed to look at, or look at the outside. You're not supposed to. He said, for, from now on, we regard no one, not even ourselves, according to the flesh. Although we once regarded Christ in this way, also we do, know, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. These are the two sons. The old or the new. Which one are you? Which one do you identify with? It matters. It matters. Butterflies do different things than worms. I, I, you know, you you see kids chasing butterflies, not really chasing the worms, you know. Like, there's just something that you're just like, wow, that's just so cool. Look at that. You just watch them. It's just different. There's a difference. What you identify with changes you. You want to, some of you might not appreciate this, but this is the real coming out. This is the real coming out. See, what, you ever heard this, I'm coming out? And so what are they saying? Is that which has been within me the whole time? I'm now going to live a life and let it be displayed before you. I wish the body of Christ, we'd come out. Yeah. Just come out. Yeah. That, that which is in you, you can come out. Yeah. And identify with who you are as a new creation in Christ. Yes. This is coming out. Yeah. And then as what you, it's crazy how if you, what you identify with, you do act upon. And you'll notice that the, the idea of coming out, when, when they say, I, this is what I'm going to identify with, fully, full on, not just a thought that I've had, not just a temptation that I've had, but, but I'm going to identify with that, then what happens is there's just a flood of actions. Well, I wonder what would happen if we identify with who we've been created, the old has gone and the new has come, if we would identify with that. I wonder if there, what we've been struggling with so long, I wonder if there just would be a flood of actions that are in accordance with and by the the power that's at work within us, which is the love of God. And he loved us so much that he didn't just send his son, but he came and he changed us. And though we were dead, he now made us alive. Well, now I'm alive unto righteousness. This is scripture. So identify with the new. God made him, again, God made him, 2 Corinthians 5.21, him, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God. See, here's the deal. When you reign in life through this gift of righteousness and grace, guess what? The devil doesn't. When you reign in life, you new creation in Christ Jesus, when you reign in life, guess what? You reign and porn doesn't. When you reign, guess what? You reign and depression doesn't. When, when you reign in Christ, you reign, and all the things of life don't. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, this is, where it's good. this is what I wanted to get to this morning. It's going to rock your world. It'll pick, set us up for in a couple weeks when we pick back up. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant. How many of you know that's what infants do? They live on milk. They, I mean, when I was a kid, I, when the microwave beeped, I would stop crying because I knew the bottle was ready, right? You know, I, I mean, milk, right? Uh, it was so funny. Ye- yesterday, we were outside working, and it was kind of hot, and, and one of my sons, my middle one, he's like, oh, I'm so thirsty. Hey, go get me some milk. And I'm thinking, that is not what I want when I'm thirsty, you know? But uh, anyway, it was funny. I was like, milk when you're thirsty? But it fit, you know? Uh, it says, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted. So this is how you know you're a babe in Christ. You might have been saved 40 years. If you're an infant, it says this, being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. How young are you in Christ? Because I've been trying to get it right. 
I've been doing this, I got this. And it seems like the longer I'm with Christ, the more I depend on my outward performance. He said, you, you're, you're moving away from, you're moving away from. Uh, Paul had to have some words. Mix, he mixed, didn't mix words when he came back to Jerusalem to talk to Peter. And he said, you, you said that, that it was by grace. And now you're, coming, you, you're not associating with that which it, you're t- trying to put people back. Up. He said, no. It's either by Christ or it's not by Christ. Yeah. It's either his works or it's not by his works. Yeah. He said, anyone who's a babe, it's because they, 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 they don't know the teaching of righteousness. My righteousness is not based on my works. My righteousness is based on Christ's works, and it was given to me. And that gift of righteousness, it would be like this, this sign. If I just had a sign, I'd go put it, on, uh, I'd go put it over here uh, on Samuel, and I'd just put this sign around his neck and say, righteous. I'd come over here to Talon, and I just would put this gift on his neck and say, righteous. And you just would go, mine? And, or you could say, mine. See, this is, I don't deserve this. You're right. But it's yours. Will you receive it? You're right. You don't deserve it. I don't, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. You're right. But it's mine. But it's mine. And at some point, you and I have to say, it's mine. That righteousness is mine. God gave that to me. That's mine. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when I identify with that, that's when the new comes out. That's the coming out party, so to speak. The coming out, what is new in me coming out. And I have a desire to live from the new. And I identify from, with the new. That I am a new creation in Christ. So identifying, and that's growing up. That's growing up. When I have the teaching of righteousness, that's growing up in Christ. Growing up in Christ. It's not, growing up in Christ is not about getting things right. It's about having righteousness and having a righteous understanding and living from righteousness instead of for righteousness. That is the beginning. Righteousness in Christ. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You got nothing on me, I got nothing on you because it was Christ. And it's Christ in me that's the hope of all the good things. It's the hope of all the good things. My faith rests in Christ alone, the solid rock, right? We sing songs, but do we understand fully? Have we sought, take a moment and thought and contemplate and think and repent and change the way we think about what we're going to ask God for in prayer? Or even if we could pray, because I don't know if I can come because I know myself too well. You don't know yourself if you don't know who you are in Christ. If you've made your Christ Jesus your Lord and you don't know righteousness, you don't know who you are. And so many times that's what we're, where we're stuck is our identity. Thank you, Lord. So if anyone lives on milk, he's still an infant. It's not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Galatians chapter 4, 1 through 7. Oh, this is good. Again, right believing will always produce right living. Galatians chapter 4, 1 through 7. Now, what I'm saying is this. Or saying is that as long as an heir is underage, okay, this is a great passage. All, we're going to talk on Galatians 4 in the weeks to come. But it says, what I'm saying is that as long as an heir is underage, he's no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. So let me just modern English here. You can be a servant in the house. You can be a son in the house. But the servant and the son, they kind of have the same privileges. If you're a kid, if you're underage and you're three years old, you can't drive the car. You can't handle the stuff because you're underage. It's the same thing that you see in wills and so on and so forth. They don't give it to you until you're 18 unless it's been, you know, you know wills and trusts and all that kind of stuff. You differ from no one. This is what he's saying. So as long as you're a babe, as long as you're a baby, let's go again, you, you, you can, you're not drawing on what is rightfully yours. So what's rightfully yours? As, as a son of God, as, as a, the, those that are made new in Christ, righteousness. But guess what? He's talking about a slave. We're talk, we'll, we'll see here that the slave that we're talking about is the law or the one who's working for something. 
working to get something. Well, even though the error, it's his, he, he's not drawing on it either. Okay, let's keep, or let's keep going here. Verse 2. Um, the error is subject to the guardians and the trustees until the time is set by his father. So the laws. You know what we've been under for a while? Some laws. Until the time set by our father. When he set Jesus to set us free. So also when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental or ABCs of spiritual forces. The, the basic things. We were under these ABCs, the elementary things of like, don't do this and do this. If I was to tell you, uh, if you were to come into my house, Philip, and say, hey, uh, the stove is hot, don't touch the stove, and, and there's a fire in the fireplace, keep your hands off the glass, it might burn you, and the knife is sharp, would, would that be kind of insulting to you? Like, I think you're young, an idiot, maybe? Guess what? When you come to my house, I don't have to say there's a fire in the stove, don't touch it because it's hot, because there's things that you know, because you've grown up. You've grown up. This is the same thing. There was a time when you and I were young and we had to be told what to do. But he says, as you grow up, you, this is not the case anymore. Let's keep going here. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son. So this is this, do you see this here? This is what he's talking about. There was these laws or this governance to say, don't do this. Hey, don't run into the street. Hey, don't do that. Hey, don't do this. And you know, you told me not to eat the cookie jar. So guess what? Or eat the cookies in the cookie jar. Don't eat the cookie jar. Bad idea. So guess what we did? We got the cookie. And we talked about this last week. As long as they didn't say not to eat the cookies, we could eat all that we wanted, and it wasn't a big deal. But he put that in place to show us that we couldn't do it. The law was to show us our inability without God's help. And so when the time, verse 4, when the, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Now, what is that? What is he, what, why? It's interesting. He talked about how you were a little child in verse 1, and now he says you're an adoption as sonship. Or in other words, you now are able, you're, you're grown. You're grown. You're, 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 it's kind of like a bar mitzvah, that you would be, now you're considered a man. You know, they, we don't do this so much in our American culture. Like I see, like in Hispanic culture, they, they have, like, for girls, they have the quinceañera or whatever they call I can't remember what it's called. Quince, yeah, that thing. So they have that, and it's a, like, it's a, it's a big deal. Well, in, like, in, in Jewish culture, they have, would have a bar mitzvah, like you becoming a man. This is this picture of you become a man. You become a son in the house. You're not just a child. You're now a son. You, in a sense, are like the prodigal son and the one who comes of age. And he says, Father, I would like all that which is apportioned to me. This is this picture here. So he says, again, back to verse 4, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those, verse 5, under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. To sonship, okay? Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who cries out. So there's something inside of you as a son that's crying out. I don't have to put some restrictions on you. I don't have to say, if you don't give, you won't be blessed. I don't have to. No, there's something on the inside of you crying out. There's something on the inside of you and I crying out. As, as a child of God, there's something on the inside of you crying out. And this is why you, even inside, you don't like sometimes the things you do that you, you don't want to do and you do because inside of you, there's something crying out. What it is, is righteousness that's crying out and saying, that's not me. That's not me. And I renounce that. And I declare, I, this is who I am in Christ. And he goes on and he says, verse 7, so you are no longer a slave. Not a, you need to do this, and you need to do that, you need to do this. But God's child, and since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. See, an heir has an inheritance. And so we need to learn to draw on, this is what that Ephesians chapter 3, that you and I would draw on, and that we would know and come to make our own, not by just knowledge, oh yeah, but to know and make our own, all of the love of God, all that's available to us. 
we got to learn to draw on that. I'm going to finish up with three scriptures here. For it is God who, Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works both uh, to will and to do. He's at work in you. Who's working in you to will and to do? God's working in me. God's working on me. The desires that I have to do right is not my, it's not my own self-righteousness. It's what he's made me. It's God in me. What's God in me? The love of God in me. The love in God, of God in me is why I love, have love for God. The love of God in me is why I have the love for God. The loving God, the love of God in me is why I have the love for you. It's why when I get upset or use cross words or whatever it might, might be, I violate. I feel, vi- I, I feel like I violated my heart. Why? Because the lo- and I say it's my heart. Why? Because the love of God is in me. And that's why I have the love of God for you. Romans chapter 16, 25 through 27. I want you to see these two verses, the last two verses. This is so, so vital, and this is why we're spending time on the love of God, because this is, this is infant milk. This is, this is what we got to get. This is how, where we grow up. Now to him who is able to strengthen you. How do you get strengthened? To strengthen you by my gospel and by the pro- proclamation or proclamation of Jesus Christ. So here's what happens. When you're weak, when you, when you and I are weak, what do you and I need to be? We need strength, right? Proclaiming Jesus Christ and his righteousness for our rags it gives strength to you to know. The, this is giving strength to you to draw on and to live from who you are, the new, to think new. Right here. So when I proclaim, now to him who is able to establish you accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim, he's able to establish you. I am the righteousness. Like, it, that's who, you, it, that tree's planted there. It's not moving. It hasn't changed. Instead of just constantly like this, like backslidden, slidden, slid, like we backslide. Do we ever slide forward? Because we were given righteousness. How about we just, just take a step into the new Instead of a slide and back, let's just step into Christ and say, Father, I receive your righteousness today because of what Jesus did for me. Think, Lord, where I've thought old and where I've been approaching you based on my works, Lord, I just, I change my mind. And I choose to choose you. And I choose to receive the gift of your abundant grace and the gift of your righteousness so that I could rule in this life. And no longer is all of this holding me. No, I hold it. I've, I've been seated in Christ. So he goes on to say this. According to the revelation, we'll read it with you, same thing. In keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for, for long ages past. So there's this picture of Christ. It was, it's, not, it's not just out there. And even what we're talking about, it's like, wow, this is in the Bible? Yeah, this is in the Bible. He says, now to him who is able to keep the next verse. But now, uh, but now is revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from. How does obedience come? From trying hard? No, what does it come from? What you come under, what you believe. That I am the righteousness of God in Christ? So if you would come under that, if you would receive that word, you're telling me that there would be obedience produced? That's what it says. That's what Paul told the Romans. This is the last verse in Romans. You want, uh, you, how, 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 where, where's the works come from? From what you believe. So what, 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 is, it, what, is, what is the role to, to, to have people work right? Preach the gospel. Preach Jesus. Preach righteousness. Preach the old is gone, the new has come. Think new. Think new. Think new. Titus, last verse. Oh, no, Galatians 2 and then Titus. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but it's Christ who lives within me. The life I now, I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Look at that. Uh, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Titus 2, 11 through 15. I love this. 
This is, oh, this is so good. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. The grace of God has appeared through Jesus. It offers salvation to all people. For, for the grace of God appeared, offers salvation. Next verse, verse 12. And it teaches us. What teaches us? Well, that'll learn you. Get the stick. Let me just be extra hard on you this morning. What are you not doing? What are you do? What have you done? What have you not done? No, no, no. What did he say? God's unmerited, unearned favor teaches us. It teaches us to say no. Like, that's what's crazy. I, you don't need to know better. You and I just need to think better. We just need to go, yeah. I, that, I, I think according to what he says. I think according to what he says. The grace teaches me. Grace is teaching me today. Grace is teaching me today. When I'm in the, the moment, because see, grace teaches me how he's been taught to me. And then what happens is, is that's how I yield to others. This is just so good. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Grace teaches us. It teaches us as we wait, as, as we wait the blessed hope and glorious appearance of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession. What did he do? He get, Guess what? He gave Christ to purify you. You're never going to be, sounds crazy, more holy. Like we think that grace is like here. And holiness is here on the church scale. But that's, that's actually false. He, he gave himself that we would be his very own to purify us. Holiness is the purifying. The set, like, oh, pure, holy, set apart. That's why he gave us Jesus. And that's why we need grace. Because grace is what teaches us. So we say no because it's your my choice. And, and what hurts a father's heart more than anything else is self-sabotage. That hurts a father. When you watch your kids light their life on fire, when you know that's going to hurt them and they just say, I'm doing it anyway. And you do with all of your might. You try and teach them. You try and tell them, don't do that, bud. Don't do that, bud. Don't do that. And they just do it anyway. And then guess what? They get hell to pay. And you're like, yeah, that'll learn you. No, it's weird. It's not like that. It's more like. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that they're experiencing something they were never meant to experience. I don't want them to experience that. And this is why we need grace to teach us. Because God doesn't like us lighting our own lives on fire. Because as long as earth remains. There is a seed time and harvest. Oh, yeah, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Absolutely, his forgiveness is there. But there is wages. And if you and I would think different, we'd think better, and we'd learn to think new, what would happen is we would live from the new, and there would be a coming out of all that's within us, and we would find that we would be changed from one degree of glory to the next, to goodness, to goodness, to goodness. And we grow up in Him because we received this infant milk of righteousness and from that place live. God loves you. So you know what He did? He sent His Son Jesus for what? Not just for eternal life, but to make you new. Think new. Think new in the middle of, all, of what's going on. Think new. I am a new creation in Christ. The old is gone. Even the desire. Father, thank you that the, even the desire to, to smoke this, even the desire to, to talk about a backbite, even the desire, it, it, that's gone. Father, thank you that in the middle of that, Father, thank you. Right, let's stand this morning. Thank you that you're at work within me, even right now, to will and to do. That you have made me. I'm not trying to be righteous. You've made me righteous. Father, thank you for the new this morning. Thank you for a new way of thinking. 
Thank you for a transforming of hearts and mind and even a new way, a, a change of mind this morning, thinking new. Father, thank you for thinking new. We're thinking new. We thank you that we are transformed by a renewing of our minds this morning according to your word. Father, thank you for your word that's gone forth and, and, and in the and penetrated hearts, but Father, thank you that it is transforming minds to think new this morning, to think new in the name of Jesus, to think new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, in order to think new, you have to be made new. The only thing that can make you new is by you receiving Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and it is so simple. It's you just simply believe in your heart, and you confess him as Lord. And you know what? One of the greatest things to do is to do it before men so that you know that you're just, Jesus is my Lord. So if you've never done that, we're, we're going to have some confession this morning. We're going to confess if you've never, but we're also going to confess if, if, if he's your Lord this morning. Because I think it's good to say where we trust. It's good to say this is where we trust this morning. And I'm thinking new. But if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to make sure that, that he is, and you want to be made new on the inside, but this morning, I want to give that invitation with your hand raised, right, head up, eyes open, we're, you know, the whole deal. You get to raise your hand in a moment if you don't have the boldness inside right now to lift it forth. Go ahead, right now, if that's you. If that's you, you don't know where you'd spend eternity. Thank you. you would pray that prayer this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So you know what you do? You respond to the Lord even if your head is saying, this is, so, this is instruction right here. You respond to the Lord out of your heart, even when your head says, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. You probably don't, because remember that one time, if the Lord is drawing you, man, you just say, God, I, I know for me. So thank you for that hand. Anybody else, real quick. Thank you, Lord. Just a bold decision. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just repeat this with me. Say, Father, today, I trust you for my salvation, for my righteousness. You alone, your son Jesus, paid the price. He died on the cross. He rose again as payment for me. I am made new in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. So let's just let's make that declaration. I am made new. Lift your hand if you're trusting Christ this morning. If we're trusting Christ. Father, we lift our hands to you out of boldness, out of honor, out of surrender this morning. In any place where we've been thinking old, any place where we've been, uh, been, been hindered, Father, I thank you for a new way of thinking this morning. Identifying with you in Christ. A new way of thinking in the name of Jesus. We say, Jesus, say, Jesus, you are Lord. I come under your word and I receive your gift of grace and righteousness in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the inside displayed on the outside in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to desist this morning. But if you have need of prayer or healing in your body, you know, the Bible says, uh, you know, if you lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. Well, if that's you this morning, and before we go, as we're being dismissed this morning, we'll have the band playing. But we'd love to just lay hands on you, see God work in your body or, if, or agreement of anything or even need. You know, this is one thing. The Bible says that there shouldn't be need among us. You just you know, this is some things that be in agreement for for needs, and some you just you gotta, we got to learn to come forward and respond. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys as you go the, today. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the Word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.